Hello there. Good evening. I'm sorry I'm a bit late, um, but so here we are once again, um, ready to start rumbling and ready to start um, learning some more. Well, um, I hope you're doing great, Joel. Thank you for being here. Um, sort of early, good hopefully. Good evening. Hopefully more people are going to start joining in a minute. Um, but before we get started, as per usual, I would like to share some of the things we're going to be dealing with this evening. Um, remember, we still have pending talking about the passive with the present continuous, which is um, probably the main topic we're going to be covering. We also are going to be um, dealing with the, well, a pronunciation um, topic in which we have reduction of auxiliary verbs. That's, as I was mentioning last night, a uh, characteristic that helps us a lot when it comes to, well, gathering, gathering some, some fluency or, you know, having some fluency when we have um, those, those sentences being used or when we have auxiliary verbs in our sentences. So we have also that. There is a conversation that we're going to be covering that has to do with, well, some issues or problematic situations that can take place. So we're going to be covering that one as well. And um, the last one will be infinitive clauses and phrases. But as regular, before we get started, before we go ahead and talk about the topics, I would like to get to know some, well, some information from you. Now, the information for tonight, or the question mainly for tonight, is going to be the following. You can answer either with the book or with the movie, but what is your favorite movie and how or why did it become your favorite movie? Movie or book, remember? If you want to mention a book, you can mention a book as well. Um, who would like to start sharing? Who would like to share their idea on what is, their favorite, what is your favorite movie and how did it become your favorite movie or why did it become your favorite movie? Okay, so we don't have a uh, volunteer. I'm going to call Beatriz. So Beatriz, what is your favorite movie and how did it turn into your favorite? Um, my favorite is series. Okay, a series, it's okay. Uh, my favorite series is Grey's Anatomy. Oh, really? <laughs> yes. And how did it become your favorite? Um, because it's the favorite to my brothers, my brother and my sister, and we uh, spend time uh, um, together. Uh -huh. Watching the series? And in, in the quarantine, we um, watched so several seasons. Seasons. All right. Very good. Very good. And you know, fun fact, that's actually my boyfriend's, my boyfriend's, my, my girlfriend's favorite series as well. Um, I think she's watching it for the third time. It's a pretty long series. I, I think I will have, I wouldn't really have the gut to watch it. But yeah, she has, um, I started it for the third time. Creo que está por la temporada dos por tercera vez. Así que, okay. sí, ya, ya la vio dos veces y va otra vez. So, yeah. Okay, very good. I so, like it. Great Anatomy. Very cool. Um, how about you, Melissa? What is your favorite um, movie, book, or series, and how did it become your favorite? Hi, teacher. Uh, my favorite series is 911. Okay. And... It's about emergencies. And each cha chapter mm -hmm. is a different emergency. Oh, and cool. I, I really would like because it's very uh, amazing and, and have a little, um, how do you say, a drama? Drama. Drama. <laughs> drama, yeah. It has some drama in it. 
Okay, very cool. Now, you know, I was just I was thinking or trying to remember the fact that I don't know, uh, Beatriz, sorry uh, to, to um, interrupt, but I don't know if you have ever watched Grey's Anatomy while eating, but that's something that we normally do whenever I have lunch with my girlfriend, we will normally watch Grey's Anatomy while eating. And that's just something that I don't know if you yes. have you ever done that? <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Yeah, but it's kind of weird because there's like a lot of blood and a lot of like gore and, you know, like, yeah, you're just there eating and people dying on the other on the other side. <laughs> okay, uh, now, how about you, Joel? What is your favorite um, movie, book or series? And uh, how did it become your favorite? Okay, um, I have a lot of favorite movies, but maybe... Uh, my favorite one is Into the Wild. It's a, a movie uh, that tells a story about a young man uh, just graduated, a guy who left the, her, his family, his friends, and he moved across the country in America having adventures. And then he cro crossed to Mexico, and then he went to Alaska and, and died there alone. Oh is maybe it, yeah the, the history is in fact it's real it happened in 1992 and then the book came and then the movie it's a good movie okay wow yeah that's very interesting um who starts in it i'm sorry who, who starts in it who's the protagonist like in the in the in the case of like the actor yeah, he's not very fa famous, but the movie is directed by Sean, Sean Penn. Oh, okay. Yeah. I have heard about that movie. I haven't really watched it yet. Where can, where can I watch it? Like, is it in, on Netflix or Amazon? I think easier. It's on YouTube. Oh, wow. Okay. That's in Spanish. That's a lot easier. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, we're going to take that risk. Very cool. Thank you very much for sharing. Okay, how about you, Emma? What is your favorite uh, book, movie, or series? And how did it become your favorite? Well, in my case, I don't have a favorite movie either or series because I don't used to see it. And I don't have a favorite book because I just read things about aviation. But I have a favorite anime. Okay. And, that, and it's One Piece. I really like One Piece, and it's my favorite. I know it's long because yeah, it's too long to be day, <laughs> Yes, now that day there are one thousand fourteen. Wow. Uh, yes, but I really like it because it's amazing. There are many things that we can't imagine when it happened. It's in it's interesting, and there are many good things that either. I mean, I can learn about it, things like uh, to be honest with others. And maybe that's not normal in anime, but I think it's a good thing for me. Okay, very cool. How about Attack on Titans? Do you like that one? Can you repeat the name? Attack on Shingeki no Kyojin. I have never seen it. Oh, really? But do you know it? Yeah. No, I mean, it's the first time I have heard about it. Really? Yes. It's a very famous anime. It's kind of weird that you haven't seen it. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I think it's one of one of the most famous at the moment is because it's airing the last season. Se me hace raro que no conozca de Chingeki no Kyojin, pero bueno. Um, Attack on Titan, no, La Guerra de los Titanes, creo que se llama en español. La verdad no sé en español cómo se llame. Prefiero los nombres en, en japonés. Pero, uh -huh. Oh, La Guerra de los Titanes. Yes, I heard about that, but I didn't hear the name. In okay. No, I didn't hear that. I highly yeah. recommend that one. You know, I am planning to uh, watch One Piece one day. I don't know when, but I think I will. Um, because, yeah, I mean, I watched Naruto. I watched uh, many other animes. But One Piece is one that I'm scared of because it's really long. And I think once I start it, it's going to take a really long time for me to finish it. But hopefully one day I'm going to get the gut to, um, to watch it. 
But yes, I if if you like anime in any way, I will highly highly recommend um, Chingeki no Kyojin. All right. So um, the things for tonight, or what we're going to be learning about tonight. Here we have it. This we have already covered for a few times. So we're going to move on straight into the present perfect passive. Before we start, though, do you guys have any questions? Anything you would like to clarify before we get to um, to work on this on these topics? Okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, so let's get on with it. So here we have it. When we use present perfect, if you guys remember, we're going to be using two things that are very very important. Well, actually, here we have three things that are very important. We have two auxiliary verbs, which in this case are going to be have and been. Yes, these are the two auxiliary verbs we're going to be using in this specific case. And then we have the main verb of the, of the sentence, but in the past participle form of the verb. Now, these are part of the um, formula for the present perfect form. And these over here, is what we're going to use to express the passive. Remember, once again, and I hope it's clear to this point, but it's always good to, you know, to get some repetition in it. Um, when we are talking about the passives, we are mainly focusing on the action, on what is happening, not necessarily on who is causing that to happen. So that's the main thing we need to remember. Now, these other phrases, however, are always, always going to be important for us to build up the whole sentence and have the full coverage on, um, well, the situation we have, to, um, we have to explain or we want to explain. Here, we are then going to start with the action or the thing that happened. The roadways have been jammed. So here we can establish a division in the sentence over here. The roadways have been jammed. This is then the action. Now, why did that happen or because of what? Well, because of people dependence on cars. Because of people dependence on cars. So there you go. Because of is an explanation. It's very similar to um, using by. Recordamos que al utilizar by es casi la forma más común, más sencilla que se tiene para expresar un, um, una forma pasiva, ¿verdad? En la cual el verbo pasa a ser entendido más como una, un complemento, no necesariamente la acción principal de la oración, sino más bien, o sea, el, perdón, no el verbo, sorry, el sujeto sería el que pasa a, a tomar ese rol. Entonces pasa a ser un complemento, no es la parte principal de la, de la acción, sino más bien ya algo que se describe, ¿verdad? Al final como una explicación extra de lo que sucedió. Um, so when we use that, we're going to have these phrases or these connectors in between. And for this ones, we can use because of. Now, it doesn't mean that this is the only one we can use in this case. We can also replace it by by. We can say like this, the roadways have been jammed by people's dependence on cars, okay? Because of is just an example, but you can use basically either of them. Um, when we are explaining something in passive voice. We can take, for example, the one before as a result. We can come along, get as a result and place it over here. And it's again, going to deliver the same idea. The roads have been jammed as a result of people dependence on car. Entonces esto no necesariamente significa que son eh, irreemplazables, verdad? Las frases, todas estas se pueden utilizar de manera intercalada, pero el punto importante también es, o sea, conocer, ¿verdad? Cuántas o cuáles son las que podemos usar cuando estamos haciendo uso de el, um, la voz pasiva. La voz pasiva, por favor, una vez más, recordarles que se utiliza para poner el énfasis mayormente del lado de la acción, no necesariamente del lado del sujeto de la oración. All right. Now, moving on. We have many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Many, pa many parks have been lost through overbuilding. Having these two as the auxiliary verbs of the, of the sentence 
And then lost, which will be um, the verb lose in its past participle form. Now, through is the connector sentence. I mean, the connector um, word we're going to be using for this sentence. And it's, uh, its meaning in Spanish is very, very similar to the one we use as a result. Sí, para este caso, eh, esto lo vamos a entender como a través. Sí, a través. Ahora, recordamos que en inglés no siempre se van a necesitar todas las partículas que se utilizan en español. Porque no sé si ustedes en algún momento han escuchado eso. Que cuando se traduce eh, un documento, digamos que ustedes van a traducir un documento de 10 páginas en inglés. Si lo van a traducir al español es muy probable que esas 10 páginas se conviertan en 12 o hasta 14, porque en español se utilizan muchas más palabras. Ah, por ejemplo, acá eh, se diría en español a través de, ¿sí? pero en inglés eso ya se sobreentiende, ¿verdad? Cuando tenemos esta frase, through overbuilding, entonces se entiende que es a través de la sobreconstrucción, o sea, el hecho de que se construye en demasía, ¿verdad? So many parks have been lost through overbuilding. And that's the meaning for through, for this specific occasion, when we're going to talk about something that has happened as a result of. Once again, you can uh, replace it with that. You can replace it with as a result of overbuilding. And there is going to be no problem at all if you use it like that. All right. And the last one is the homeless have been... Oh, wait. My bad over here. Um have been displaced, displaced is the main verb, and it will be due to, have been displaced due to. I don't know if you have ever used this um, tiny phrase ever, due to. Um, maybe, Melissa, have you ever used due to? Uh, sorry, repeat me, please, teacher. Have you ever used the phrase due to? Do to uh, do um, I I uh, so when when is debido a mm -hmm. do to debido a exactly do to that is the way the proper way to use do to entonces una vez más verdad tenemos que o sea, todas estas frasecitas by as a result of todas ellas vienen eh, dándonos el mismo resultado o sea que se refiere a que son la causa, explican la causa por la cual algo ha sucedido. So here, the homeless have been displaced due to overcrowding of city shelters. Due to overcrowding of city shelters. Um, do we have an idea of what uh, the shelters are, Joel? Shelters. I don't have the right definition in Spanish, but son como los refugios. Exactamente. Refugios, resguardos también. Ah, ok. Uh -huh. Shelters. Okay. Podemos entenderlos como eh, resguardos. Very good. So, yes, there you go. The homeless have been displaced due to overcrowding of city shelters. Entonces, eh, significa, ¿verdad?, que las personas sin hogar han sido desplazadas eh, debido a la sobrepoblación en los resguardos de la ciudad. Sí, en city shelters. Ok, so, this challenge for you is going to be the following. We're going to be using these words by, as a result of, um, then the next ones which are because of, through, and do to, to create new sentences. Okay, so we're going to be doing that in this page over here. So I'm going to be taking all this away. Um, just a sec. All right, so... We're going to be creating new sentences, just taking these as the examples. We're not necessarily going to be focusing on any of the specific, um, the specific times we have available. Let me go ahead and write, type down over here the other two, which are going to be um, by and as a result of. Okay, so taking this, sentences as examples. How can we create uh, a sentence where we use a passive voice for by? Um, from Melissa, 
do we have any sentence in mind we can create using by in the middle and then also using the passive voice? Mm, let me see, teacher. Um, Okay, I'm going to give you guys an example. We can take this, for example. My car has been broken by Sorry, uh, Nate Ward. Oh, gosh. By the neighbor, there you go, sorry. So my car has been broken by the neighbor. Remember, broken is a word we can use to refer to many things that it can happen to something. Um, for example, it might be that the neighbor, or oh, we're gonna replace it with crashed, has been crashed by, my, by the neighbor. ¿Sí? Entonces significa que aquí verdad estamos hablando de primero la acción. My car has been crashed, that's the action. Then who did that? Well. It was the neighbor, but here we're going to be using this by as a connector in between to explain that this is the reason why the car has been crashed. Um, if 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 it was an active sentence, aquí viene el motivo en el cual o la forma en la cual se utilizaría si fuese una oración activa. Si fuese una oración activa, sería entonces my neighbor. Um, my neighbor crashed my car. Crashed my car. Sí. My neighbor had crashed my car. Esa sería una oración activa. Aquí entonces significa que el sujeto está al principio de la oración sin ningún problema y se explica verdad, directamente la oración eh, que ha tomado lugar. Esto sería, o sea, para una explicación regular, para algo que ustedes quieran contarle a alguien, no hay problema, ¿verdad? Alguno en utilizar las, las formas activas de las oraciones. Pero la forma pasiva sí se necesita a veces cuando queremos, como les he mencionado ya un par de ocasiones, poner el énfasis en el hecho de que esta persona ha sido la que causó esta situación. Sí, yo quiero que sepan que esto, lo del principio, sucedió debido a esta persona de acá, o a este motivo, en el caso que no sea necesariamente una persona, ¿verdad? Podríamos decir que, um, ok, aquí vamos a colocar algo distinto. By a tree that fell, that fell after the hurricane. After the hurricane. Sí, entonces ahí tenemos. Eh, o sea, se, uh, my bad. There we go, a hurricane. So, um, my car has been crashed by a tree that fell after a hurricane. And here we are explaining the first thing that happened and then the reason. The reason is a tree that fell after the hurricane and that's what ended up crashing my car. Así que esa es la relación que existe, sí, entre las, entre las dos partes. Lo importante, como les he mencionado, es esto, ¿verdad? Que ha sucedido un problema, que algo eh, se ha dañado, que algo se ha quebrado, que algo eh, no está del todo bien. Y luego colocamos el motivo ya como la, la razón, ¿verdad? Por la cual eso sucedió. Pero lo que yo quiero que las personas sepan principalmente es lo que sucedió, el problema que puedo estar enfrentando. Ok, Melissa, do we have a sentence now? Yes, but I create a sentence with as a result of. Ok, we're going to take that one then. Uh, I has been very stressful as a result of my problems. Ok, very stressed. Aquí solo sería stress, nada más, sí. Very stressed. Okay, okay. As a result, oh, sorry, there we have it. As a result of my problems. Nice. Now, of course, when we want to be specific, you can say my problems at home, my problems uh, in at, at my work, or if if you would like to um, to be specific. If not, it's actually 
a very good example of a sentence using as a result of. I have been very stressed as a result of my problems. So the important part is that you have been very stressed. What has caused it? Well, your problems. All right. And the reason why we don't use stressful is because a stressful is an adjective. Si, sí, stressful sería utilizado para describir una situación. Y aquí lo que necesitábamos era, verdad, un, un verbo. Entonces, por eso no, no utilizaríamos stressful. Stressful podría ser, por ejemplo, en el caso de que alguien me pregunte, how is your environment at work? ¿Cómo es el ambiente en el trabajo? And then you can say, oh, it's stressful. Sí, es estresante. Okay. Um, now, from Emma, which one would you like to take and what will be an example that you will provide using a passive voice? Because of right. All right. Well, I think the town has been remodeled because of a a donation to another country. Okay. Because of a donation from, sería, from other countries. From other country. Aunque si queremos hacerlo ya de forma que suene mucho más natural, sería from a foreign country. A foreign country. Sí, sería foreign country. En inglés, o sea, sabemos que en español ¿verdad? sería fácil decir de otro país, de otra nación. Pero en inglés eh, sería de un país extranjero. Sí, from a foreign country. So the town has been remodeled because of a donation from a foreign country. Very good. Y no sería to another country or to other country. Porque cuando utilizamos to, se refiere a que nosotros somos quienes realizamos la acción o quienes estamos... Eh, dando verdad el, el, la donación entonces si estamos recibiendo si es nuestro pueblo el que ha recibido o el pueblo vecino o sea pero lo recibió de otro lado de otro país sería from sí porque o sea el, el apoyo vino desde allá así que por eso utilizaríamos from y no to para describir una situación como esa ok but very good example very good sentence the town has been, remo has been remodeled uh, because of a donation from a foreign country all right. Um, how about Daniel? Will we have an example, Daniel, for these um, sentences? Okay, teacher. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Daniel. Okay. Mm, I see. Eh... Puedo usar cualquiera de las que tenemos disponibles. Todavía está by, que sería por, true, que sería a través de, y do to. Uh -huh. A, a causa de, o debido a, perdón, debido a. Uh, my house has, has been writing, uh, paint, painting, sorry, mm -hmm. painting mm -hmm. uh, by my brother. Okay, very good. My house, my house has been painted painted by my brother all right mm -hmm. by my brother there you go sí entonces tenemos verdad que esa sería la persona quien ha realizado la acción y esta sería eh, la acción específica que ha tomado lugar so my house has been painted by my brother muy bien thank you very much um, how about Joel? Which one would you like to tell Joel? Would you like to take through or do to? Well, I made three sentences. Sentences, one using do to, the other one because of, and okay. the last one uh, um, through. So I take them all. Maybe. Sorry? I take them all, so you can use all of them. Vamos a escribirlas todas, no hay problema. Okay. Mientras más práctica, mejor. I'm going to... I'm going to... I'm going to read them. The okay. first one, cons concerts have been restricted due to COVID-19 pandemic. Okay. Concerts, concerts have been, have restricted, been restricted due to COVID-19 pandemic. Oh, wait. wait uh, we already had the due to. Um, 
aquí tengo problemas y que solo voy a poner de pandemic, porque hay, hay, hay ocasiones en las cuales si mencionamos eso, si lo escribimos, se pueda, pueda caer el video. Así que solo vamos a poner pandemic. Okay. Mm -hmm. No worries. That's Due okay. to the pandemic. Okay, so there we have it. Okay. Thank you very much. The other one, um, the gas have been rising because of war between Russia and Ukraine. Okay. Otro tema delicado que no quiere ver YouTube. <laughs> okay, no okay so the uh the gas prices did you say yeah the gas prices have been rising have been because of rising war between... mm -hmm. because of war and that's all because of the european war okay european war all right and you said you have one with through right yeah. Yes, uh, traffic policemen have been allowed to find drivers through rises of reckless drivers in El Salvador. The first part, what, what was it again, please? Traffic policemen oh. have been allowed. Traffic pollution. Oh, policemen. 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 Oh, policemen. Okay. Traffic policemen have been? Allowed. Have oh. been allowed. To find drivers. Okay, to find drivers. Through rises of, of reckless drivers. Okay, you know? through rises of, of reckless, reckless drivers. drivers. Very good. This was and that's really in our country. Mm -hmm. Of reckless drivers, drivers in our country. There we go. Okay, so traffic policemen, oh, policemen, policemen. <laughs> so traffic policemen have been allowed to find, not dine, find drivers. There we go. So through rises of reckless drivers in El Salvador. Very cool. Very, very cool sentence. Okay, thank you very much. So traffic policemen have been allowed to find drivers um, through rises of reckless drivers in El Salvador. This one over here kind of sounds like it's an active voice uh, sentence for a bit, but then when we use the through at the end of, of, of the first class, there we have, um, you know, the proper way to use the passive voice. Okay, now Beatriz, um, the only one we have left is do to, but you can use anyone as we have already used do to. Así que cualquiera de las cinco que guste usar, Eh, para su ejemplo, no habría problema. So, what will be your example, Beatriz? Okay, uh, my tablet has mm -hmm. been damaged. Mm -hmm. Due to it's be being broken. Okay, due to oh, has been damaged. Due to, aquí creo que lo vamos a cambiar porque al final, si ponemos otro, otro, otra eh, cláusula que sea en tiempo perfecto, se puede hacer ya una complicación de la oración. Podría ser mejor si dijésemos simplemente eh, un motivo. Entonces podría ser due to the crack o, o it's crack. Due to it's cracked on the screen. Sí, it's, it's crack on the screen. O sea, debido a eh, la quebradura, digamos, o la ruptura que tiene en la pantalla. So my tablet has been damaged due to its crack on the screen. Screen, no screens. All right. So those are the examples. Very good. Very good work. And it's an actually um, proper way to use all of these. So there you go. You guys, I think you guys are ready to start using the passive um, with some of these prepositions. So the ones we're going to be using most commonly, I consider, are going to be um, as a result of and do to, because I, I think those are the most commonly used. Now, through is not really that common, and by is actually starting to fade away. It's not really that used anymore. Because of is another one that is very, very common, but I consider as a result of to be way more commonly used than because of. But 
Okay, thank you guys very much for that. Now, here we come to the pronunciation section. And this happens mainly because of the need that Americans, not other um, regions or other places where English is used, but because of people from the US have the need for speed. They always want to be speaking faster. And that takes us or takes them to erase some of the letters that the auxiliary verbs are composed by. Here, the auxiliary verbs we're going to be seeing um, are in the beginning is, or there we have are, and we have has, and we also have um, the verb have. Now, the way in which we're going to be contracting or eliminating or reducing the, the letters is going to be as follows. Fresh water, and then when we get here, we're not going to be saying is. We're only going to pronounce the sound of the letter S. Fresh waters being wasted. Fresh waters being wasted. We're not going to say fresh water is being wasted, but use the S sound. So fresh waters being wasted. Um, how would you do that? How would you pronounce that, Daniel? Can we please pronounce this one? Breathe. Mm -hmm, please. Fresh water is being wasted. Okay, una vez más, recordemos. El punto importante de esto es que se reduce en la utilización de la I. Sí, esta I, básicamente vamos a hacer como que no está acá. Solo vamos a decir el sonido de la S. Sí, fresh water is being wasted. Vamos a pasar la I casi por encima. ¿Intentamos otra vez? Fresh waters being wasted. Wasted. Very good. So no, fresh no, waters la lengua, being wasted. La lengua. Sí, ¿verdad? Y eso que todavía no les he traído otra lengua. Casi siempre eh, me gusta la poner alguno que otro. <laughs> <laughs> so there we go. Fresh waters being wasted. Sí. Entonces, casi como si fuese contractado, casi ese sonido va a entregar pero no necesariamente va a estar contractado, ¿verdad? O sea, al menos no en un, en, como lo podemos ver acá, no es que está contractado, sino que ese sonido es el sonido que vamos a, a tratar de utilizar. Esto, la única función que tiene es darle más fluidez al idioma, no significa que es algo, o sea, necesario. Si ustedes quieren decirlo, eh, first water is being wasted, Bien, pueden hacerlo así, sin ningún problema. No es que se van a estar equivocando si no lo pronuncian, o sea, si no lo pronuncian solamente con el sonido de la S, pero para que suene como más natural, se hace de esa forma, ¿verdad? Solamente eh, pronunciando el sonido de la S, sin detenerse tanto en pronunciar la I. No vamos a decir first water is being wasted, sino que first water is being wasted. Casi como, como si estamos um, rock skipping, ¿sí? como si estamos haciendo ¿verdad? el salto de las, de las rocas en un lago. Así que eh, eso sería bien, bien importante de tomar en cuenta. Next one up. Newspaper. Papers. Newspapers be, are, sorry, newspapers are, um, newspapers are, ajá, eso sería, newspapers are being thrown away. Newspapers are being thrown away. Sí, no sería R, sino R, nada más. Newspapers are being thrown away. Sí, se reduce el sonido de la A, nada más. No se va a, a, a reducir todo, ¿verdad? Sino que solamente esa pausa que la A incluiría al tener que decir R. Sí, newspapers are, R. Sí, no necesariamente R, sino R. How will we do that, um, Joel? How will we pronounce that? This one is... is... Tricky. Uh, uh, we're more, more difficult than yeah, the it's previous tricky. one. But yeah. um, newspapers aren't being thrown away. There you newspapers go. Newspapers aren't being thrown away. There you go. Very cool. Very, very cool. Newspapers are being thrown away. So we don't really have to stop to pronounce the letter A here. We don't have to stop and say R. We only go and following the flow, just saying newspapers are being thrown away. Newspapers are being thrown away. All right, next one up. Uh, we have too much trash. And once again, we're only going to use the S. Too much trash being created. Too much trash being created. Here, what we're doing is very simple. Sometimes it's not going to be as possible to do this as with this sentence. With this sentence, it's very, very easy. 
because it has an H sound at the end of this word. And that's why it sounds way more natural. M too much trash being created. Here, we don't really need to stop and, and, and do the has because we already have an H sound there. Así que como tenemos el sonido de la H justo al final, no es necesario, ¿verdad? Que nos detengamos a tratar de generar ese sonido de H. Sería difícil si aquí fuese una palabra distinta. Por ejemplo, mmm, si dijéramos too much waste, ¿sí? Too much waste. Si fuese algo como esto, tal vez sería más complicado. Too much waste has been created. ¿sí? Too much waste has been created. Se tiene que más o menos generar, ¿verdad? Un poco de sonido eh, de la S. Ahora, ¿por qué voy a entender o cómo voy yo a entender si es been o si es, um, bueno, si es, perdón, el is o si es has? Ese detalle se va a encontrar en esta parte, en este otro complemento, en este otro auxiliar. Si yo pronuncio being, sí, tenemos también que hacer esa diferencia. Being y been. Been. Been nada más. El otro es being. 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 Sí. Y eso nos va a ayudar a entender, o sea, cuando estamos transcribiendo principalmente, si es un eh, tiempo perfecto, o sea, como este caso específico acá, sí que sería has been, o si sería un participio nada más, como en el presente. Solamente decir algo que está sucediendo, ¿sí? que sería con el is being. Has been sería para algo perfecto, algo que ya sucedió, y is being es algo que está tomando lugar en este momento. Ok, so too much waste has been created. Too much waste has been created. Too much waste has been created. How do we pronounce that, Melissa? Uh, too much waste. Or trash. Too much waste being created. Too much waste being created. Very good. Ahora vamos a cambiarlo por trash para que sea más fácil. Vamos a irnos con trash. Okay, Melissa, with trash, how will it sound? Too much, too much trash being created. There you go. Very good. Too much trash being created. And the last one is parks being lost. Um, parks being lost. Parks being lost. Parks being lost. O sea, este casi ni suena. Sí, el, 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 la parte que queda del have casi casi no se escucha por el hecho de que le, a ese es un sonido bastante arrastrante y luego eh, la B es un sonido bien fuerte. Así que sería parks being lost. How will we pronounce that one, Beatriz? Parks being lost. There you go. Very good. Parks being lost. All right. So whenever you guys have to face the situation where um, you have to go ahead and pronounce a sentence like this, where there is auxiliary verbs, like the ones we are uh, using over here, you can simplify the pronunciation by subtracting some of the words, or at least the first uh, couple of words. On, on the auxiliary verb. Now, this is only recommended for casual um, conversations. I wouldn't really recommend you to do this if you're in a formal environment. Like if you're talking to your boss, if you're talking to people who are, let's say, investing on your company or investing on your business, I will recommend you to use more proper ways of speaking. You will have to go ahead and use the full length or the whole um, of the words that you have in, in the sentence. Si estamos entonces hablando en un, en un ambiente formal, si estamos con, con nuestro jefe o estamos hablando con personas, ¿verdad? Que como las que por lo general categorizamos como personas importantes para el negocio, eh, vamos a ser más cuidadosos con esa, esa utilización o eliminación de la pronunciación, porque eso tiene bastante que ver al final, ¿verdad? En cómo sonamos en ambientes formales. Ahí sí sería necesario que dijésemos um, fresh water is being wasted. Sí, o sea, porque eh, pues se refiere, ¿verdad? O se utilizaría en un sistema o en un momento mucho más formal. So fresh water is being wasted. Newspapers are being thrown away. Porque así ustedes suenan, o sea, como si conocen mejor incluso eh, la utilización de estas palabras o la utilización de estas oraciones. Too much trash has been created. Lo mismo, ¿verdad? Eh, vamos a tratar de pronunciarlo 
de forma concreta. And the last one, parks have been lost. También. Como les dije, no significa que es obligación um, esta reducción de los, de los verbos auxiliares. Se hace esto mayormente para simplificar eh, la pronunciación de estas oraciones y acelerarla, ¿por qué no mencionarlo un poco? También se puede acelerar un poco la pronunciación. Muy bien, ¿tenemos alguna duda con esta sección? ¿O ha quedado claro cómo vamos a utilizarlo? Clear so far. All right, very good. So, moving on, we have the conversation. And this is a very important conversation, I consider, if you like Um, you know, things that are related to the environment. So the topic is very simple. It's titled, What Can We Do? And in this conversation, we will have two people taking part. It's going to be Carla and Andy. And the way it should go is as follows. Look at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can, they do, how can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is. But a lot of companies, ooh, a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk the, to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, Then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is under top executives or is one of their top executives. All right, so that's the conversation we have. In here, there are a few things that I consider important to highlight. But before we go ahead and talk about the highlighting parts, I would like to know who of you guys will be willing to practice the conversation with the teammates. Um, so who would like to do the practice right now? ¿A quién le gustaría, quién le gustaría ser um, parte de la práctica para este momento? Me, teacher. Okay, Melissa, and who may join Melissa to practice the conversation? Okay, Joel, go ahead whenever you're ready. Uh, okay. Um, who starts? I uh, think me? Melissa is about to start. Okay, go ahead. Okay, go ahead. Okay, okay. Uh, look at, at all those dead fish. What do you think happened? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those, law, those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it, about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a to get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate but publicity. By the way, uh, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top ex ex ex. Uh, executives. executives, 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 executives. Okay, very good. Thank you guys very much. That's really good. Really good how, how you guys did there. All right. So, um, so the things that are kind of important to highlight over here will be the fact that, um, well, we have don't we don't really have a lot of new words in this in this sentence. But one of the things that I consider to be important is the message behind it, you know, because it's something that we don't really see it in our country as we're not that industrialized as other countries, but it's something that tends to happen a lot in many countries where people have um, companies nearby and those companies are causing many issues with the environment. They don't really 
care about the things around them and they damage a lot of the uh, like the natural resources that people have um yes Joel? yes i just want to say that i didn't know that we can we can use the word run in this context because he said the tv station to run a study on it i mean oh. this in this context that verb i didn't know that and it's kind of interesting yeah you know it's very common use for anything that has to do with um well media when we talk media we talk about newspapers we talk about the, uh, the radio we talk about the um the tv um so yeah anything that has to do with media um for example if you talk about like the different utterings of a magazine we can refer to those as runs for like or if you talk about a newspaper you can also refer to it as its new run. So every time you want to refer to, um, well, who please, or, or making a story or writing a story about a situation, we are going to be using the verb run. So yes, it's kind of interesting, you know, because run, it represents a physical yeah, activity. How, how, will you, how will you translate it into Spanish? It's run literal. A story on it. It's literal. We can, we can uh, translate it literally. Podemos traducirlo de forma literal. O sea, correr una historia. Claro, en nuestro país no se, no se, no se usa así, it sounds, ¿verdad? It sounds weird. Yeah, in, in a country it sounds very weird. But you can translate it uh, literally or you can interpret it as um, write a story. Or for the TV, it will be, um, well, basically create a story about the situation. Sí, o sea, podría ser, pero en, en, se puede traducir también. O sea, como correr una historia. Como les digo, en nuestro país suena extraño, es cierto que suena raro, pero sí es un término que ya he logrado escuchar ¿verdad? en cuestiones de um, pues cosas que tienen que ver con las comunicaciones o con, o con las telecomunicaciones. Pero sí, run a story or run, um, or an, uh, the new run of a magazine is something that is very commonly used in English. Así que siempre que hablamos acerca, por ejemplo, de las ediciones, Sí, de algo, también podemos utilizar este verbo, run. O si queremos hablar como por cuánto tiempo fue publicado algo, o sea, refiriéndonos, ¿verdad? Sea a uh, una, eh, ¿cómo se llama? Una revista o tal vez alguna clase de periódico, también podemos preguntar de esa forma, ¿verdad? For how long did it run? Sí, o sea, como por cuánto tiempo estuvo publicando. Si se gusta, se puede utilizar... Eh, ese verbo para reemplazar run, pero eh, sí es cierto, o sea, es una cosa bastante interesante, de hecho, que se utiliza, ¿verdad?, en el contexto de las comunicaciones. Ok, um, so yes, as I was mentioning previously, it is something very, very sad that happens a lot. We have seen it in many examples. For example, if you have a seen or watched the sing sums, um, there we can also see something like this happening where industries or companies are very reckless about the environment or the things that are around them and they simply just damage or hurt um, the natural resources of a region. But we are going to have Daniel and Beatriz as well get to practice as we don't really have those many people here. We're going to be running that practice. Si sí, vamos a practicar entonces la conversación, aquí no será necesario, ¿verdad? Crear eh, breakout rooms, ya que pues somos unos cuantos. Así que vamos a estar practicando, ¿verdad? Eh, entre nosotros. Primero vamos a tener práctica entre Daniel y Beatriz. Y ya luego podría ser, ¿verdad? Eh, tal vez Joel y Daniel y Melissa con Beatriz. Así que, so, Daniel and Beatriz, whenever you guys are ready. Okay, teacher. Okay, uh, look at all those the fish. What do you think uh, happened? Well, there's a there's a factory inside town that pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the laws? The laws. Law. Low. Low. Yes, it is. But, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. 
that's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a, get, get a TV station to run a story on it. Yes, companies hate bad publicity. By the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of their top exec executives. 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 Mm -hmm. Executives. La última palabra nos vino a complicar. Bueno, eh, una vez más, eh, la palabra pumping, sí, cuando hablamos acerca de algo que está pumping, básicamente nos referimos, ¿verdad?, a algo que está eh, descargando, podríamos decir, eh, pues algo, ¿verdad?, en otro algo, pero mayormente pumping se refiere a cosas líquidas, sí, vamos a utilizarla para referirnos a la descarga de algo líquido, for example, when you go to a gas station, um, las diferentes partes en una gasolinera donde podemos eh, ir, ¿verdad? Y, y pues recargar gasolina, eh, se llaman pumps, sí, pumps. Otra de las acciones que más o menos podría ser traducida en español o entendida de la palabra pump, Sería, ¿verdad? Eh, más o menos empujar, ¿sí? Cuando hacemos esa, esa acción, también podría ser el, el pump. Um, o presionar. Una de esas dos podría ser otra que se pueda entender de pump. No es la forma más apropiada de traducir ninguna de esas dos palabras, pero podría llegar a entenderse de esa manera. Luego, tenemos esta palabra. Se pronuncia como law, ¿sí? Law. Cuando hablamos de las leyes, en individual o eh, en singular sería law. Y para el plural sería loss, loss. Um, luego creo que no teníamos, oh, management, sí, management. Es una palabra un tanto larga, que si nos puede llegar a más o menos complicar, sería management. And then the last one, executives, sería la única. Hoy, industries, aquí quizás un poquito de, um, como más o menos a la hora de pronunciarlo, ¿verdad? De hacerlo un poco como más acelerado, porque cuando tenemos nombres propios, eh, por lo general tratamos de que se, que se note, ¿verdad? Que van como unidos, digamos. Entonces, si dijésemos Apex Industries, o sea, utilizando, ¿verdad? Ahí la característica de los linking sounds, ¿sí? pasando de una palabra a la otra sin hacer tanta pausa. Apex Industries. Pero bueno, vamos a escuchar ahora a Daniel y Joel. So, Daniel and Joel, whenever you guys feel ready, you may start. Okay, okay. All right. Start, please. Okay, <laughs> look at all those dead fish. What do you think happening? Well, there's a factory outside town that's pumping chemicals into the river. How can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a study on it. Yes, companies hate about publicity. By the way, what's she name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. I oh, know, my uncle is one of their top executives. Finish the microphone, teacher. Yeah, my mic, sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go. Thank you very much. And you did pretty good, pretty, pretty good. All right, thank you very much. Now, we're gonna have the last interaction from the girls and we're gonna hear Beatriz and Melissa. So whenever you guys are ready, get at it. Okay, uh, can you start? Yes. Look at the all those. I'm sorry. Look at all those dead fish. Uh, what do you think happened? 
Well, there is a factory outside town that's pumping chemical into the river. How can that, that how can they do that? Isn't that against the law? Yes, it is, but a lot of companies ignore those laws. That's terrible. What can we do about it? Well, one thing to do about, about it is to talk to the company's management. What if that doesn't work? Well, then another way to stop them is to get a TV station to run a, a story on, on it. Yes, company hate bad publicity. Uh, by the way, what's the name of this company? It's called Apex Industries. Oh no, my uncle is one of the top ex ex I, I don't know. <laughs> Executives. Executives. Sí, cuando hablamos de top executives, hablamos de los eh, ejecutivos, ¿verdad? De los ejecutivos más altos o de los de mayor rango. Pero muy bien, buen trabajo también. Hicimos eh, muy buen uso, ¿verdad? De la pronunciación un poco eh, rápida y pues logramos completar muy bien la conversación. Bueno, eso era todo lo que teníamos para hoy o el tiempo al menos para esto nos dio. Um, Now, from my side, I only have to thank you guys very much for your attention and participation in tonight's class. And I will be seeing you tomorrow then. Hopefully tomorrow we can get to cover other topics and uh, continue learning. So thank you. Thank you very much. Have a really good night and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Goodbye.